All the merry go round broke down. We went round and round. We climbed with his feet. We let this fall. The merry go round went. The merry go round broke down. And the merry go round this town. The lights went low. We both said, Oh, with the merry go round went. Hello, this is America. We hope you've been enjoying this musical cocktail coming to you from Berlin in the German Overseas Service. And now for a time check. At the sound of the gong, it was exactly 9 o'clock Eastern War Time. It is now time for our next news bulletin in English. It will be followed by a short commentary.
the head of the Department for Foreign Workers of the German Labor Front declares that the foreign workers in Germany are treated on the same level and receive the same food rations as the German workers. Just the devil, says this, announcing an all-out intensification of Germany's war efforts, is headlined by all German newspapers today. Just the devil's statement that the necessities of total warfare will take precedence over all other needs in the life of the German nation is particularly emphasized. His call for more soldiers for the front and more workers for armament factories is another front-page feature, while his announcement that the mobilization of Germany's entire national working and fighting strength guarantees her ultimate victory is quoted with particular enthusiasm. German people welcome the fact that energetic measures are going to be taken to ensure that no manpower is wasted. Berliners who are best acquainted with Dr. Devers, energy and efficiency, are confident that their doctor will handle this problem as well with his customary speed and matter of fact. That is the end of the news. You may hear the next news bulletin at 10 o'clock Eastern War Time. And now you will hear an English version of the article published in the week's issue of The Right by Russian Seductive Dugger under the title The Passing the Enemy's Head Star. Good evening, listeners in America. When in September 1939, the Reich was forced to war by her enemies, she was in possession of newly organized and modernly equipped armed forces. These forces embodied a technical head start for us, due largely to the fact that in the Treaty of Versailles, the enemies themselves had destroyed our old army, and thus made it necessary for us to start all over again. This superiority in arms was one of the reasons for our rapid victories in 1939, 40, and 41, for it enabled us to employ a grand scale and revolutionary type of warfare against which the enemy had nothing comparable to offer. Everywhere we were masters of the battlefield because our armed forces operated not only according to entirely new methods which contradicted all previous military experience, but also because they were equipped with the most modern technical art. The so-called Blitz campaigns of the first war years completely revolutionized the military thought which had prevailed up to then. The Fuhrer, who had conceived and applied this new type of warfare, thus became a revolutionizing renewer of military strategy which had never suffered such a sudden break in its development as in 1939-40. An entirely new chapter of operational thought began at that point. It was inevitable that during any prolonged duration of the war, our enemies should copy the so-called German strategy of the Blitzkrieg. For that strategy was based more on new conceptions than on any new military secret. This strategy had not complicated military thought, but simplified it. It was not difficult to follow the German example, therefore, since our methods could easily be deduced from our successes and their planning. Above all, it was easy to determine which weapons had played the major part in achieving the dramatic German success. In its offenses, the German Wehrmacht had made a far greater use of the motor, both on ground and in the air, than had ever been considered possible up to that time, and that was the basis for our speedy and widespread operation. There was nothing left for the enemy to do but to use the same methods and weapons against us, which they did, and that is the main reason for the negative character of our military development since 1942. For just as we had gained a head start over the enemy by having been forced by circumstances to rebuild our armed forces in the years from 1933 to 39, so the enemy now enjoys the same advantage compared with us. In many fields, they had to start all over again, and were not bound to existing forms, which was unfortunately not the case with us. In addition, 
The enemy produced a few new but far-reaching inventions which revolutionized certain branches of modern warfare. For instance, the so-called Rotterdam apparatus, which enabled the enemy air force to fly over the right and despite bad weather, roughly make out the outlines of such objectives as large cities. That was the cause of the enemy terror attacks on our city during the past fall and winter. We are not ashamed to admit that the invention of the Rotterdam apparatus came more or less as a surprise to us, and that we have taken a long time to develop powerful defense means against night air attacks carried out with the assistance of that mechanism. The British will also need a long time, however, to develop similar countermeasures against the employment of our V-1 weapons. In this respect, therefore, the cases are now exactly reversed and not by accident, but as a necessary result of the development of military techniques on both sides. We, too, after recognizing the enemy's temporary superiority in certain fields, have had to start again from the beginning. We soon saw that we could not beat the enemy simply by outproducing them in their own sphere, but only by creating new means and methods. The necessity was not only to catch up with the enemy's head start, but to surpass it. That has been done in the most various fields during the course of the past two years. The results of this decisive development will begin to appear more and more on the battlefield. The employment of our V-1 weapon is only the introduction. And if it has already caused such a stir among the enemy, we can look forward with high hope to further development. The decisive factor about this new development is that it will take place within a completely new framework. And therefore, we can justly expect that the enemy will be faced with utterly new facts and in a state of unprepared. The essential advantage of our V-1 weapon is not so much that it is automatic, but that it has completely demoralized the enemy defense system. The same will be true of our other new weapons, which in the near future will be employed in the most various forms. Of course, every weapon has its counter weapon. The history of military development shows no example of the failure of such counter weapons to appear. But experience proves that is a considerable time until such counter weapons can be discovered and even longer time until they can be produced and employed. And this time is decided. The significance of the normal waiting period we ourselves have experienced during the past two years of aerial warfare. We were forced to organize a considerable part of our national energy in order to cope with the difficulties resulting from if today, therefore, we are not all too far removed from the appearance of new weapons, the same difficulties will necessarily develop for Britain, which lies within easiest reach and deserves the severest punishment for its barbarous methods of aerial warfare. The technical results of our having surpassed the enemy in certain fields are in large part already in the production stage and only a minimum still in the experimental stage. We would be ashamed to speak thus if the facts did not justify our so doing. Not long ago, we inspected modern German weapons, the sight of which not only made the heart beat faster, but for a moment caused it to stop beating. We do not say that in order to bluff or boast. We have always been certain of the justice of our cause and, and consequently of its success, especially so during the critical phases of this war. We do not necessarily need the confirmation of technical science in order to convince us of the certainty of our coming victory. We believe in it because we believe in the German people. Furthermore, there are a number of other historical grounds which relieve us of any doubt as to our final success. But it is inspiring, nevertheless, to see the firmness of our and views confirmed by hard facts. And that is the case in our armaments production today. It is not too much that we are on the way to overcome once and for all the crisis in our military say that we are on the way to overcome once and for all the crisis in our military safety which has so hampered our warfare during the past two years. That took time, and it will take some more time until it has finally been completed. 
But we are no longer helpless in the face of the enemy onslaught or unable to do something about it. German inventive genius has stood the great test. The world has to wait a long time before it shows up again, but soon the hour will come. It is also decisive that our production will be in a position to manufacture these inventions of our science in sufficient quantities. Here we have taken all possible precautions in order to guarantee that no vacancy should turn up. The enemy is laboring under a fateful illusion if they believe that their air attacks have so severely damaged our production apparatus that it is more or less incapable of new activity. Here, too, the company has been the mother of invention. By means of organized protective measures and grand scale distribution, we have made our armament industry airproof, a process with whose tremendous difficulties we are already familiar, but which Britain has yet to encounter. We evacuated Berlin in the summer of 1943. The British are now doing the same with London in the summer of 1944. Last year, we made the German armament industry safe against air attacks. It will not be long until Britain is forced to do the same, only under far more difficult conditions. The enemy is not over the hill, as their leaders have to often claim, but has just begun the climb. The development of the coming weeks and months will prove that. At any rate, we can look forward with confidence to what is coming. We shall not tire of repeating our opinion furthermore, stated at the start of this worldwide struggle, that war is a historical event which can no more be decided alone by technical science than by political or economic or moral means. Only the collaboration of all these forces in a total war effort embracing the whole nation can lead to success. Never has a single weapon decided the victory. That would not only be nonsense, but contrary to all history. Weapons are but the outward demonstration of the manly spirit and substance of a people which is defending its life. They not only express its technical ingenuity, but also its unshakable firmness of conviction in the belief in its mission and way of life as well as its gift for overcoming apparently insurmountable obstacles. The only difference between the present and the past in this respect is that now such developments are far more rapid, and whereas in earlier times they demanded a century, they now sometimes occur more than once in the course of a single war. That appears to be the case at the present time. It is clear that our enemies will leave nothing undone to destroy us. And therefore, we dare leave nothing undone to prevent that. And where we can, to deal out blows of our own, not batting an eyelash at the blows which we receive in return. Each of us must try to surpass his neighbor in morale, in energy, in diligence, and courage. Then these virtues, together with our arms, will gain the victory. The more difficult it is for us to achieve, the more firmly must we believe in it, and the more fanatically fight and work for it. The individual may fall, but not the flag. It waves over all our daily doings, over the heroic deeds and historical achievements of the great, as well as the silent beautifulness of the small. It does not wave in the puny breezes of daily events, but only in the great storm of history. been listening to the English version of a weekly article published by Rice Minister Dr. Gobble in Dr. Rice under the title, Surpassing the Enemy's Testify. It was translated and read for you by your Nazi commentator. We invite you to listen every week on Thursday at the same hour for the latest article by Dr. Gobble, Germany's most authoritative spokesman. And now, dear listeners, we are presenting our usual Thursday evening pizza program. Home sweet home.
Company, this is Ruth Collins, the American Expedition Corps, in the four corners of the world tonight, with their home and home program. Well, sir, now I'd like to say to you now, I've got some trouble in your own sick bag. But I know that the little sick bag is much too small to use all the trouble you give the boss. But maybe for the next half hour, it's just the easy to the the and the sun off with the minor screen.
Well, there must be how the view is all I can see. To play that with a grand delusion and keep the person a whole tight. Well, I'm pretty sure that the person could have a good the whole tight, but with all the opposition, we can't blame them if they did quite a lot and still are doing plenty of sitting, huh? But this, I think the person could only talk to you now, because they probably like to do it. Sorry, they can't see you like your little smiling face there. They ask you to give them an encore, which would be the outside so good. Well, let's go back to uh, a time in musical history now, a little more remote than that occasion. The caravan. Ever seen any of them around the desert? You boys who are trying to hear down French music? All right, here's the caravan for you.
you know. I bet you just talked to the American forces. We're going to see you into the base of heaven with that sweet little old voice of yours and a darling little old song. Then I listen, there's the AUF. Don't you think it would be nice to live a little more in the past? The world of the future is not much fun anyhow, is it? Or the present time? With such things as pilotless bombers floating around the world? I don't suppose the family means exactly your idea of something to do with it, well, it does not go backwards. You have to turn off the calendars and go back to the good old days. But then the African began playing his brother. Yes, quite a long time ago, a book got a grand new presentation of it. Now, now, that is the thing you need, isn't it? All right, then go to town with it. Oh, well,